first poem I'm going to read is uh, takes its title from a chapter title from a fifth grade math book, Certain, Impossible, Likely. Two trains ap approach Chicago at 50 miles an hour. Susan has five apples, but James has only two. How much would you weigh on Jupiter, on Earth? Each pie is divided into six equal parts. The first train leaves San Francisco at 6 a.m. Remember, an object can't have negative weight. The New York train will make three stops of an hour each. If Susan weighs 3,000 pounds on Mercury, will they let her on the train? <laughs> Did you remember to account for settling during transport? James, busy converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, has missed his train entirely. The taxi charges 225 for every half mile or a minute in traffic, and the conductor is drunk and we're moving way too fast. Estimate the likelihood that James and Susan will meet. Hint, you can slice each pie only once. This next one's called Persephone at 13. She can swim in and through, tail flicking down into the earth of her own flesh, becoming in her descent a cell, an electron, small things spinning in a great void. We're so far from solid, more dark than anything. Fourth period, the little fish, dime a dozen under the microscope, pump ruby spheres through cellophane tails. Down here under the lens, it's all tunnels, jostlings in the hall, the long, slow ticking towards summer, mothers in their cloaks preparing to mourn. Dime a dozen, those depths, those five red jewels. All the girls are doing it. Dark matter richer than loam, its loping song, pull of a way, of in, the sweet seed shall eat on the way down. Oops. I seem to have marked the wrong thing. Just a minute here. Should be at the end of number two. There we go. Ah. Super baby jumbo prawn. One up, one down, my favorite option of the neighborhood taqueria, and up and down again, a clunk and a whisper, more perfect perhaps if it were shrimp, sorry, pure ring of oxymoron, but I like it the way it is, with black beans and green salsa, giant minus one tortilla fresh from the steam. I like the almost, the sideways, series built and then broken, 11 or seven, the abandoned factory with its grid of mottled glass, in one corner, the inevitable bird's nest or bullet hole. Or the temptations of hopscotch. Step on a crack, break your mother's back. I know, I know. How expected, how don't we always want it rough? Some days it's enough, sitting in the car, eating lunch, watching surfers tempt the waves. Sun through the windshield, ice melting in the agua fresca. And afterwards, rolling bits of tin foil into tiny silver hearts. Lightweight charms strung out, strung out along the dash. Balance of beans and rice, sting of salsa where I built my bit, sting of salsa where I bit my lip. Helpless, compelled, I chew it till it bleeds. All right, and this last one is called Etymology of Lost. I'm going to move this because it's making me a little crazy. There we go. Maybe I won't. Um, <laughs> Etymology of Lost. And I'm up there on the mountaintop, my sister says, and she's telling me about her father, car abandoned, body never found, the friend and her mother hung out together on a long line of not knowing, light in an alleyway, his wallet still on the dash. And now here I'm supposed to detail something even worse, a whole family down the street gone, laid out in newsprint and bulletin, body in the water, pins on a map, looking, and looking away, or another one's twins lost at 22 weeks. I say it too, I'm not immune or strong or maybe cruel enough, like a set of house keys. Have you lost someone? Past participle of lose, Middle English losen, from Old English losian, to perish. My infant son plays a game with his pink rubber ball. He hides it, and when he lifts, his pillow, lifts the pillow, there it is. Lord save us from the etymologists, or is it the talk show hosts? Show, don't tell, we say, but that can't have been what we were talking about. For example, one of them had a broken back. 
For example, I'm so sorry for your loss. The ball is still there. He can do this for hours. We stood on a street corner clutching our children, noses buried in their pliable scalps. It is so unfair to end this. They found him, or they never found him. And then we went out for Kung Pao Tofu and home to bed, and I kissed my son on the head and sang to him, first the song about the angels, and then the one about the sky. <laughs>